So my name is Mark Worthing. I, I work at Sierra Club BC as the um, as a conservation and climate campaigner. Um, so my work takes me all over the province and, and North America, Turtle Island, um, working on issues like stopping the Kinder Morgan pipeline. No big deal. And I work uh, on some forestry related issues on Vancouver Island and through the Great Bear Rainforest. Um, as well as tankers uh, and other pipelines up the coast as well, a little bit into LNG uh, and the growing issues around fracking and uh, increased petroleum infrastructure being put along the coastline and through uh, a lot of different landscapes across northern BC. Um, but as a, as, a, as a coastal guy, I kind of got my, um, my eyes open to the interior uh, rainforest system through my work with uh, a coalition of organizations called Flathead Wild. Uh, we work together, groups from Montana and uh, Alberta and BC, and we work to, to bring about increased conservation in the Southern Rockies. Um, and that's where my, my eyes were open to, to inland rainforest work. Uh, that, these, that these guys know super well. Um, so tonight's kind of a special night. Um, we're on the eve of celebrating 150 years of indigenous resistance. <laughs> so thank you for all being here and not wandering the streets of Victoria drunk, um, like a lot of other people are tonight and will be this weekend. Um, you are here on the unceded uh, and treaty lands of the Songhees, Lekwungen, uh, and Esquimalt First Nations. Um, and a lot of the territories that you'll see in the film and a lot of the area that, that we work in across uh, Turtle Island and, and what we call BC uh, is unceded territory and, and has been uh, since time immemorial. And I mean, I kind of want to sit with that for a minute because I mean, what does that mean? But this is a common thing to do territory acknowledgements, especially when we're talking about um, violence against the land, violence against indigenous people, resource extraction, uh, the global marketplaces and the effects that it has on the ecology and the place that, that we now call home. Um, so I'll just touch lightly with, with what cessation is. Like what, what do we mean when we say unseated? What does that actually mean? Um, and I, I was a political science nerd in, in university. I, I studied, studied politics. So unseated lands, uh, actually date back to a Western definition um, that, that comes from 1648 uh, in Europe. And it was what brought about, uh, or sorry, the, the, the peace treaties of Westphalia of 1648 were where we kind of, in the Western world and in Western state systems, come to our understanding about what the definition of sovereignty is. Um, and so in, in, that's what brought about the end of the 30-year war in Europe. So religious groups, you know, lords of lands, nations, countries, etc., um, came together, 109 parties, and signed all these treaties and blah, blah, blah. But uh, in there is the definition of how land can be exchanged legally by Western European you know, political philosophy. Um, and cessation can only happen through war, conquest, um, you know, stated, and, and fought out in the terms of war, uh, or through barter, trade, and negotiation. So treaty counts. Um, and so when we say unceded, we're literally talking about territories, lands, rivers, mountains, waters of indigenous people that were never fought for, we never warred with them and did a formal conquest in Western terms. We never paid them. Uh, we never bartered with them, we never traded. We just literally came and made colonies. So British Columbia is still, as it stands, a colony. We're just occupying what is legally, under European Western definitions of sovereignty, First Nations land. Um, so that's what we mean when we say unceded territory. Welcome to unceded territory. It's not really for me to welcome you here, but, um, but I'll welcome you to this little theater for now. <laughs> so with fewer than a dozen caribou remaining, in the only herd that ventures south of the 49th parallel. Um, God, that's hard to think about, actually. Um, 
This is perhaps one of the most pressing and least talked about wildlife conservation issues in the region. Uh, in 1908, uh, the last three Dawson's caribou of Haida Gwaii were killed. Right, that was 1908. So that canary in that coal mine died a long time ago. Right, and the Haida have been dealing with what their coal mine is a terrible metaphor, but what their coal mine is now um, since 1908. So, you know, thinking about that herd that, that ventures south of the 49th now, um, it's very real. And it's like, I mean, you'll see in the film, it, it's, uh, it's a very emotional um, uh, issue. The film you'll see tonight is the product of a multi-year undertaking by a serious, dedicated group of naturalists and adventurers. Um, please do stick around. Um, afterwards, we'll have a bit of a panel um, and learn more about the unique uh, ecology, uh, politics, uh, the region um, of this imperiled animal and imperiled ecosystem. Um, don't forget to hang on to your raffle tickets. Uh, the filmmaking team will be raffling off some of the gear afterwards. I hope you didn't put tickets in the little small backpack. <laughs> um, and it's my pleasure now to uh, welcome the team that's behind this film. David Moskowitz, Marcus Reinerson, Kim Shelton, and Colin Erisman of the Mountain Caribou Initiative. So I'd like to call up Colin and the director and he can introduce the film. Hey, welcome. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. I know there's a lot of other stuff going on, so we'll, uh, we'll dive into the film, get to know it a little better, and then we can all go partake in the uh, rest of the festivities. But um, the first thing I want to say is thanks for all of the supporters who made the film happen. It's amazing how large the network needs to be to pull together an activist film like this. It's not something that's um, designed for distribution on TV the subject matter wouldn't really fly um, for a broadcast network. Um, additionally, uh, the uh, content just took a huge network to pull together the, the voices and the story. So we're really grateful for everyone who participated and helped us in the field as well. There's additionally some sponsors who helped make this event happen here tonight in Victoria. So we're really great for, grateful for them as well. Um, and I think the, the film really speaks for itself, but I just want to say that um, one of our goals with this, this film is to be a leverage point in this conversation, and there's a lot of um, good science out there and a lot of really, really smart people who are working with these issues, but it hasn't necessarily seeped into the mainstream as a topic that's getting much reach, and we hoped to engage with this story in a way that people could connect with it emotionally. And so we hope um, that you all can, whatever feelings come up, you can uh, follow that thread and get engaged with the issue and let this film, film mo motivate you. And we really learned a lot about that from the, the storytelling of some of the First Nations we got to work with through this project. So we're really, really grateful for their perspective and teachings and um, time they shared with us during this project. So thanks for coming and enjoy the film.